What what about Jared Stidham, right? What, do we care at all about talking about Jared Stidham? He had a great practice last week. There's no doubt about that. What what do you make of this? Because to me, the only way that I can foresee Jared Stidham actually starting games for the Patriots this year is if Cam Newton is, is injured and Mac Jones isn't ready, right? And well, they just feel like, let's bridge the gap with Stidham. It's similar to like what they had with Garoppolo in 2016, where maybe this could be a trade showcase, right? Like maybe he actually right. plays well and we can actually get something beneficial out of this. I, I just don't see without outside factors, without injuries, without things going his way, I just don't see him winning it outright. Like just being the best quarterback right. in camp and winning the job. So, I mean, look, he was the best quarterback on the field on Friday after Cam got hurt. I don't think anybody would that would uh, disagree with that. And at the end of the day, the best quarterback is going to play. Right. I'd like to think that's what it's going to come down to. Now, the issue with, with Stidham is that was one practice. And not only does he have to be better than Cam Newton and Mac Jones, you know, where Cam's starting from a level ground, Max may be starting a little bit in the negative just by being a rookie. Stidham has to overcome everything from last year. And the struggles from last year and the, it, you know, not being able to win the job last year. So he's got a long way to go, probably a longer way than the other quarterbacks on the roster. But, and I'm not saying this is going to happen. If he practices like that between now and week one, and, and he's doing that in training camp and he's leading the ones up and down the field in 11s and all of that, then yeah, we need to have that serious discussion. Is there any reason to believe that will happen? I don't know. Anybody can get hot. Anybody can have one day and get hot and look good. Uh, let's see him do it again and again and again, and then we can start to talk about it. He had the one good day, and it deserves to be mentioned. Absolutely, you know, we ripped the kid. <laughs> we we ripped the kid enough that when he has a good day, right. we should get, we should give him his props. But it was one good practice as he's entering what his third year in the league. Uh, let let's see him kind of string them together now. Yeah, absolutely. And someone may brought up a good point that I just wanted to address quickly about the Patriots like picking plays to to help Mac jo uh, excuse me Jared Siddham's trade value, right? Like like knowing that what they're going to run is going to work against a certain coverage so Jared Siddham looks good. I, I think that's a little Maybe. bit it's a little <laughs> bit conspiracy theory ish but the two throws that he made that everybody's talking about as like the wow plays of practice were those two in-breaking routes where the Patriots ran what's called a dagger concept, right? The, the inside receiver runs a vertical clear-out route. The outside receiver runs the deep dig in inside there. And the vertical route, typically, especially against zone coverage, will clear out the middle of the defense and present that dig route to the, as the sort of one option, number one option on that progression for the QB. And that's what he ran twice. He makes that throw to Isaiah Zuber. They came back to it later against Jacoby Myers. I'm not going to go full conspiracy theory and say that they're calling plays to make sure that Jared Siddham looks good in front of the media because I don't know if that's necessarily true. But they did call plays in both those instances that work really well against the coverage that they faced. And maybe they ran the same plays with Mac Jones and he just didn't make the throw. You know, I really have to go back and be able to watch the tape, which we obviously don't have the benefit of. But that right. those two coverages that they ran it against one was uh three one was cover four a, a dagger concept against those types of coverages is is a usually a pretty big call for josh mcdaniels you know that's you're playing a very heavy quarters based or zone coverage team he's going to call a lot of those types of plays because he knows that the clear out route's going to work and he knows the dagger and in, in the uh, in cut is going to work and and that's how it, you coordinate that's how you play call right so it is an interesting theory of you know how much hype do they want to get out about Jared Stidham right. and maybe push him up a little bit no one out knows other than what we report now at this point of how anybody looks right and I know it's not coming from the team so it'd be really interesting to see how good he looks and if I can correlate it to anything to do with the play calling I never really thought of that because again it's like kind of full-blown conspiracy but it is fun to think I about. mean I I look like I'm hosting conspiracy theory podcast right now you know like I, I got to tell you, this guy's Trader Joe's makes their parking lot smaller than they need to be. So the stores look fuller like that's, you know, that's my that's my super low rent <laughs> conspiracy theory.